we're coming to you live now from North Central Healthcare, where we have an opportunity to do our next Athena Award interview. Uh, I am Katie Belch. I am the Vice President of Community and Government Relations for North Central Technical College and also last year's recipient of the Athena Young Professional Award. And today I'm honored to be here for our second, my second interview, Brian's uh, fourth interview, I believe, uh, with uh, Jessica Meadows from North Central Healthcare. Jessica, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So first of all, I just want to say um, thank you for having the opportunity to come to North Central Healthcare and for me to just share some of my story and my leadership journey. So it's been very humbling to be nominated. Um, but my name is Jessica Meadows and I am the Communications and Marketing Director at North Central Healthcare. I am a wife of 23 years to my husband Jody and I have two amazing children, um, Ember who's 13 and Halston who's 11. Well, I love that. You have wonderful children. <laughs> um, so, so Jessica, tell us a little bit about um, you know how you have advocated not only for yourself but for another person or cause. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so people who know me know that I am passionate about mental health. I'm passionate about people having their basic needs met so that they can meet and take care of themselves both mentally, physically, um, behavior health. Um, just having those basic needs met is really important to me. Um, I'm fortunate to be to work at North Central Healthcare where those are things that we do and provide, so it's a great match for me. Um, I also coach a lot, a lot of sports. So I coach soccer, I coach basketball, and I feel like I have the opportunity in that role to reach out to families, to connect with kids, to connect with families on a different level that may be a teacher, a guidance counselor, um, someone else in the community, a healthcare provider may not see or may not be able to experience. So I get the opportunity to really um, interact with people in different ways. Um, and one story I wanted to share with you today was an example of one of our young student athletes um, in the Everest District who um, was struggling with some challenges of her own. And a counselor reached out to me and said, hey, sports and athletics, specifically basketball, is something that really made her feel good about herself and wanted to know, can this athlete join your team? Can she come on board? How does this work? Can we make it happen? And talking with our booster club, yes, this is something we really want to embrace. We want to make sure that this, this child has opportunities. Um, so coming with that, bringing her on board, um, we were able to cover her expenses for her uniforms, for other supplies she might need. And then also, um, she was living with different family at the time, provide her rides to and from practices and work the rest of the team to really come together and support her the best we could and um, through that experience I was able to to pick her up um, from her home and bring her to practice and so every day I took that opportunity to have like that one-on-one -on -one conversation with her and talking with her um, I said how was your day today and she said eh, it was okay and I could have left it at that but I said so tell me why is eh, it was okay what does that mean and asking that secondary question and really following up for her to engage in conversation with me um, gave me the opportunity to actually learn more about what eh, it's okay means. Um, she went on to say that she didn't have a locker at school. And this was December. So her not having a locker at school was surprising to me in, in the middle school, junior high level. And she had explained to me that her, you know, through the, the experiences and struggles that she had, she was unable to attend orientation. And so that's when you get your locker, and that's when you learn how to do the locker combination and things like that. And she was embarrassed to ask for help. And that's really hard for me to hear because I, I want her to succeed and, and help advocate for her. And so we had a conversation about self-advocacy and making sure that you're asking for help. And it's not embarrassing to ask others for help. Um, but I asked for permission from her and her family if it was okay that I reached out back to her counselor and um, said, hey, she doesn't have some of these basic needs being met. She was actually hiding her um, clothes and her jackets and her boots and some of her gear under a garbage can in the, in the girls' bathroom. And so it was really hard to hear. And so I reached out, spoke with her counselor. That next day I picked her up for practice and I said, hey, how was school today? It was a completely different child. She's like, it was great. I got my locker, I put my stuff in it, I know where I have to go. And I think it's just having um, the ability to reach out and really 
advocate for kids and connect with them on a different on a different level that our teachers do a great job but sometimes our, our kids are just scared of certain things they're scared of authority and so being a coach it gives you that opportunity to connect um, to connect with kids in different ways um, another example I have and I'll be I'll be brief is, is some of the work at North Central Healthcare that we've done to help um, kids and families advocate for themselves but also connect with mental health resources and behavioral health resources. Um, working with my team at North Central, um, we put together a lot of handouts, materials for mental health days within multiple school districts so that kids, teachers, students, everyone has those, those tools to advocate for themselves but then to be aware of what's available for them. Um, so it, I was, we were just speaking about this before we came in. It was great to see. We had someone reach out and say, uh, we saw those tools. I went to an Aspire's Well Child Check, and we get those mental health resources at our Well Child Check now. And to me, that's amazing that every kid that goes through and has a Well Child Check will now their families will have those mental health resources available at their fingertips, which is makes me very proud. But it's able to give people the tools to advocate for themselves and to get the help that they need. Those are such great examples. You, know, you hear all the time, especially with our youth. They just need to have at least one trusted adult mm -hmm. that they can connect with. And sometimes that might be a teacher or a counselor, and sometimes it might be a coach, you know, mm -hmm. as, as the example that you gave, and, and how meaningful that you were able to, to build that relationship with her and that she could have that trust and to share that information with you and you could then advocate for her. But then what I love, mm -hmm. you taught her to self-advocate, mm -hmm. which is just such an important thing, um, I think especially for young girls. And, mm -hmm. and I, I know I've seen it in action. You know, I've got an eight-year-old daughter, and Jess has been – amazing as a referee and, and really just a great resource for those young kids building those connections. Mm -hmm. um, she always loves when she gets to see Mrs. Meadows out on the court. <laughs> so thank you for, for doing that good work. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so tell us a little bit more. You know, you've, you've shared some really great examples, but when you think about your journey in, in this role and in your work in the community, what's an example of a time that you've acted courageously? Yeah, it's an interesting question because when people define courage or being courageous, um, Usually you look at yourself, and I'm probably along the same as a lot of the finalists, they go, I was just doing my job. I was just yeah. doing what I know how to do. I was going about my day. I was doing what I love to do, and others define you as courageous. So I did this. I reached out to, to when you gave us these questions, and, and I reached out to others, and I asked them, am I courageous? Like, is what does that mean? And so... They came to me and said, you know, it's that ability to ask the hard questions, to um, having the courage to challenge things that may not be right, having um, looking at things from a different perspective, um, having to speak, having the um, courage to speak up when you're overwhelmed, um, because a lot of us as leaders, um, when you volunteer, when you're part of leadership, you can be overwhelmed, and it's having that courage to say. This is too much, and I need help. Um, and I think that's really important. That's part of that ad advocacy piece. Yes. Um, but it's also just having that courage to say when things aren't going well, and also speak up for others and advocate for others. Um, it does take a lot of courage to keep giving. Um, there's a lot of need in our communities all across the country, all here in, in central Wisconsin. So it takes a lot of courage day in and day out to keep seeking those and to say, um, you know, enough. I've done enough. And there's never enough, so it's that courage every day to, to keep seeking things out that will not only fulfill you, but will help others. And I think that that's, that's really important. Um, during the pandemic, it was especially important um, with courage. Day in and day out, I saw our staff in healthcare um, working at North Central Healthcare in our nursing homes and our behavior health and our mental health programs. They demonstrated courage beyond belief. Um, what they did during a pandemic um, how they helped people and kept doing what they do best in their daily lives um, was only more inspirational to me to take the skills that I have and be able to want to be courageous and fulfill my role in, in our organization in, in mental health, behavioral health, and nursing. And to me, that feels courageous, but it, again, wasn't anything I said, this is courageous, but that's what you know others see of you. So I really get that inspiration from everyone else and they're really that, that driving factor because as a leader, it's never ever about you. It's always about the other people. 
and I feel um, here it's it's really easy to do that because you want to keep giving back. Yeah. So those are great examples, and I think sometimes you know we we talk a lot as as women in particular, and and sometimes working women who are balancing mm -hmm. and juggling a lot of different priorities. Sometimes saying no is a courageous mm -hmm. thing, right? Absolutely. And you know you mentioned just how you taught that to to that young woman, and really being a self advocate, and you self advocating for yourself to say you know what. This is where I need to take a, a little bit different approach, and and you as a leader, your fellow you know female leaders, you know, look to you and say, gosh, wow, if if Jessica can do that, you know, I can do that, or if she can ask the tough questions, I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's such an important part of it. Can you share a little bit more about how you you brought other women into leadership, or or brought them new opportunities, and both through experiential things, seeing you, you know, doing that work, um, but also you know from a leader's yeah, so um, I think being uh, working at North Central Healthcare gives you a lot of opportunities. I've certainly worked with some amazing women leaders. Healthcare has a lot of great female leadership um, and working with them and moving through. Um, I've had the chance to support a lot of leaders in a lot of roles, being in communications and marketing, get to work with a lot of leadership, um, do leadership development, uh, training, as well as train others on how to become leaders within our organization. Um, one of the examples I do want to give, though, um, it does relate back to um, our basketball. My, my, my love and passion outside of communications and marketing and doing what I do on a daily basis um, is sports. And um, being that, that coach and being that leader, um, just this, the past few years I've been very much so involved with our Booster Club Association with DC Artists um, through girls basketball. Um, I currently serve as the president of our, boost, of our Booster Club. But one of the things that we really wanted to do was to bring structure, to bring accountability. Um, we created a 501c3 separate um, from the school, from um, the organization, to make sure that we had that accountability, um, to make sure that we were doing the right things, and to make sure that we were functioning in a way that we should have. Um, we also brought in um, abuse prevention training for all of our coaches across the board, um, which provides that accountability, but also gives that permission to our coaches to, to step up and say, this is what I can do when I see things that something's not right in this situation. Or I have a child that needs help and doesn't know how to reach out, but I know something's not right. So we provided all of our coaches um, from the Youth on Up um, abuse prevention training, which was really, really well received and really was eye-opening for all of us to go through that training. So that was something new. Um, but specifically um, with our Booster Club, we were able to add in that leadership element into everything that we do. Um, and what I think is was different from our booster club from years past was that we also wanted to involve the girls and the young women that were leading. And we provided a space on our board for two of our high school athletes to come in and be a part of the structure of the organization, of the voting, having a say in what we're providing to them is important. But it also gives them that opportunity to see what leadership looks like, what structure looks like. Um, you know, they're in a school setting, they can get those things through sometimes through like student council and just the way the schools are structured. And this, having this experience would allow them to see like, hey, I could run my own booster club in the future as an adult, or we did this. And they gain those experiences to that structure and that organization that I think, um, hadn't been there in the past, and it really gave them a voice for what we were doing with our funds, with our fundraising, and, and how we can, and they can, support um, the younger girls within the basketball program. So and that's one thing, too, that we always want to promote, is having our young leadership and our upcoming leaders making sure that they're sharing that and they're teaching our youth the way they know how, and then we pass that down to them, they pass it down even further, and it's just this wonderful, great cycle where we're all leading one another, which is really, really awesome. I love so. that, just that full circle mentorship model mm -hmm. where really people are just continuing to pass that down, and I, I've, I've seen that firsthand um, through our experiences together. One of the things I really loved with the work that you did this summer was removing barriers to some of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about um, your driveway skills program. Yeah, so um, so this past summer, um, we recognized that there, you know, the barriers to some kids joining sports. Today, these days, there's cost of uniforms, there's cost of um, registration, there's t 
team fees. There's a lot of costs that goes along with playing sports. And as parents know, there's a lot of gas money and back and forth and to and from. And one of the things we wanted to remove as a booster club were those barriers. We wanted girls to be able to participate in sports without having to pay for something, without needing a uniform. With being able to try out for a sport, see if they like it, see if it will give them those opportunities for the future without there being a fee. And so what we did is we created these schoolyard skills sessions, which were complete and 100% free of charge. Um, our booster club had our coaches volunteered and we offered these sessions one a week for the entire month of August. And we had upwards of 30 kids that, that joined every single week. Um, we had uh, close to 75 or 100 children that came in through grades um, three through eight who've never played the sport of basketball before and were able to experience it. Um, and then pedaling off of that and moving forward, propelling off of that, was these kids then joined rec basketball and had never played the sport before and may, maybe would not have been able to participate, but are now had the opportunity to try that for free um, without anything holding them back or having any barriers. So it was a really great experience. Um, we brought all the balls, we, we made sure the kids could participate, but then we also did that same thing and had our older kids be demonstrators, run drills and skills, and make sure that we were involving them at all levels as well. So it was really, really great. I love that great exposure, great opportunity, again, removing those barriers, creating mm -hmm. opportunities for kids, and especially young women who perhaps might not have had an opportunity, because we know sports are sports, but there's so many other life lessons mm -hmm. that you gain through participation and, and a variety of activities, sports being one of them. So thank you for championing that work on behalf of, of the Booster Board. Great things happening in our community. Um, and kind of along those lines, I know you're a, a fellow Everest grad. Um, what does it mean to you to be back in the community that you grew up in and giving up your time and talents? And what other things are you involved in? So um, I had to make a list of this because when I go through over the years, um, it's been wonderful coming back to this community. Um, I had worked in the past where I commuted and I worked out of the community. And one of the things that I missed was coming back here and being able to live and work in the same community. So for the last 10 plus years, I've been able to do that, which has been so rewarding. Um, working at North Central Healthcare naturally gives you some of those opportunities um, within the workplace, but then also outside of the workplace. Um, so I've been involved with United Way on multiple levels, um, from in the past serving in the marketing committee to um, just our day-to-day -day throughout the year, um, fill a backpack, fill a need um, with um, the different events that they have, like the Ready to Read, going into classrooms and reading books to kids and talking to them. One of my them. favorite things. I know. Kindergartners are uh, so sweet. It is so much fun. It's so, so very rewarding to be able to do that. Um, to some of the workplace giving campaign here at North Central, involving employees in that, getting them excited, but giving them that avenue that they can give, even as much as a dollar, a dollar a paycheck. Yeah, such a small amount goes a huge way. It does. So, um, also I've done things um, with the Salvation Army. I've, I brought my kids out and we've done bell ringing. Um, we've done a lot of fundraisers with coat drives and things like that, where I just have the opportunity to connect people with those and, and be that connector in those situations. Um, I've done a lot of work with local walks, so the suicide prevention walk here um, as, as in Marathon County as well as in Lincoln County. Um, additionally, the Alzheimer's walk and doing some workplace organization and structure around that. Um, I volunteer coach for our, so our soccer and also for basketball as well as, like you mentioned, I referee for basketball too, which uh, is very rewarding to me to see the kids' eyes light up. Um, but then also things that we do in the community that, that I promote within all the other organizations that I'm in, like our booster clubs and things like that, like um, Gidorsi Clean and Green, and getting out there, rolling their sleeves up and picking up garbage and making sure that our communities are clean, um, and bringing those kids involved yeah. and to say, hey, this is your community yeah. and you own it. Absolutely, establishing and that volunteerism from a young age. Yeah. Got maybe a different state coming up, breaking mm -hmm. leaves. Shout out to our friends at the United States. Yeah. Um, and then I think recently, um, one of my biggest projects um, that has come about recently is I volunteered to serve on the Wrangell Town Hall Park Committee. So the town of Wrangell, small Wrangell, that I grew up in, little Wrangell out, um, out to the east of Wausau here, um, is near and dear to me. And I had heard that they were creating a park or wanted to build a new park. And I thought, well, I wonder if they have 
um, anyone who does communications and marketing. And so uh, my family said, uh, do you sleep? Do you ever sleep? Right. Like, like are you gonna, yeah, you're you really going to take this on? And I, I said, a lot of time. Yeah. But, but I have to ask the question. They might need somebody. And so I called them up and I said, hey, do you have anybody that does communications or marketing or graphic design for you? I'd love to help in whichever way I can. And they said, absolutely, come to our next meeting. And so we were able to put on some really great stuff um, that was at the Rainbow Harvest Day just this past uh, two weekends ago um, that, that I was able to jump on board and just basically take the skills that I've learned over the course of my life and just give back to the community, which was, was very, very rewarding. Um, but then the ability to say that hey, we're making a park that's going to be for kids, for families, for seniors that they can use. and just having your name be a part of something that's going to be that's going to live long past you to me is just it's so rewarding it's it and it's not about your name on something it's about the ability to see that that's going to last long by the time i'm gone and my grandchildren like they can enjoy that and everyone can enjoy that which is so rewarding um and then i think truly at north center for healthcare um we have the ability and we're so fortunate every day uh, to see individuals who have needs um, in mental health and behavioral health and developmental disabilities and some of our elderly in the community, um, we just get a unique opportunity to give back on a different level and use the skills that we have to reach out. And like I said, a lot of these opportunities came from working at North Center Healthcare and it's been just a fantastic journey here in my last 10 years that, that I've worked here. Um, but we get that opportunity to take the skills that you have and really apply them to how you can make a difference in the community. So it's been very, very rewarding. Well, you are definitely going to leave a lasting legacy in this community. Thank you, well, Jess. Thank you. I had an opportunity to know you and work with you in a variety of capacities, but I learned so much more today. You've given up so much of your time and talent to our community. You're better for it. This organization is better for it. Our community is better for it. Our girls are better for it. So thank you for being just such an amazing convener, collaborator. Thank you. Um, it's really wonderful to chat with you today. Awesome. And thank best you so wishes. Much. That's right. Uh, this is Brian Otten. I'm the marketing director at the Chamber. And just a reminder for everybody out there watching that the Athena Awards will be named, uh, or we will have the awards program and name the two uh, recipients on Wednesday, November 9th. And that's a lunchtime program at the Jefferson Street Inn. And if you'd like to register or learn more about that program, please visit wasachamber.com. Katie, Jessica, thank you. It was a great, great interview. Uh, we will have two more uh, through the rest of this afternoon, uh, one at 1 p.m. and one at 2 p.m. And then we'll finish out uh, the final interview on Monday. So thanks for watching, everybody.